we are gonna go. Hey everybody, welcome to my garage. I wanted to do today's video. You get what you pay for. The Milwaukee here is or was my current setup for reinflating tires after being off-road. After Overland Expo, I made the decision to go ahead and get the new Morflate 10.6 Pro. So I wanted to put them head to head so you could see, is this worth the money for the upgrade? First, we're gonna take a look at some of the specifications on the Milwaukee. It is 13.8 inches wide. It is 7.8 inches tall. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess their width is at this end this ends a little wider they list this as 6.4 inches now granted i use the xc 6.0 battery and they list that as 1.6 pounds so you're looking at a total of 8.6 pounds for this setup right here that also doesn't include a charger in my experience since i've been using this we obviously have a ford bronco with the stock 35 inch tires we usually go down to about 18 psi and back up to if we're towing the trailer 38 i'll usually get two full reinflations of all four tires off one charge on that battery if you're going to need to do more than that you're going to have to bring a charger with you and all that so that's a little bit more added weight those don't weigh that much the milwaukee has a digital display you can preset your psi that you want press start and it'll go it is rated for 150 psi max obviously i haven't tested it that high i don't have anything that would accept pressure that high but it will fill all four tires back up to 38 no problem experience with the milwaukee is it does okay for its price point speaking of price the recent price at home depot for the inflator itself is 179 dollars if you already own milwaukee batteries obviously that's a plus so i'm trying to weigh the lower cost of the milwaukee to the higher cost of the morflate so i'm going to assume that you already have batteries if you don't have batteries yet right now milwaukee has a kit on sale you buy two bad two <laughs> two two batteries and the inflator you get for free and that's 279 at that point i'm gonna just go out on a limb and say just get the morflate because you're already closing in on the price of the morflate at that point so i'm gonna go based off the price difference of just the inflators is it worth spending that much more money on the morflate compared to the milwaukee i couldn't find anywhere on milwaukee's website where they list cfm what that's rated for i want to say at some point i saw it one time it was in the fours i think but i i cannot find any definitive answers just looking right now if i find it i'll pop it up on the screen in the fours i think the milwaukee also comes with a little hose ready for a schrader valve it tucks in there nicely and it also comes with a couple other accessories a needle and maybe something for filling up a maybe a small inflatable raft or something okay now for the big boy the morflate 10.6 pro this has the same digital readout you can preset your psi to what you want hit go and go do something else why don't you make like a tree and get out of here obviously the name implies it's cfm the morflate is rated at 10.6 cubic feet per minute of air movement morflate comes in at 14 inches wide nine inches tall and they say seven inches wide which i'm going to assume is their base because the unit itself is narrower than this now i can't find anything on morflate's website as to how much it weighs but i can tell you even with that xc 6.0 battery installed the morflate does weigh more than the milwaukee so again something to consider just want to touch on the CFM ratings. Morflate actually has a really good article on their website describing what is usable CFM. Obviously the top rating 10.6 for the Morflate and the Milwaukee, again, I can't remember if I find it, it'll have been on the screen. That is at zero PSI. So if your tire is completely flat, has no air in it. As you inflate that tire, the compressor has to work harder to push air into that tire, dropping your usable CFM. Go check out their article on that. It's very interesting and very technical if if you're into all that and you like to nerd out about that kind of stuff now the real test the weight the size the convenience again the milwaukee has a little battery you can take it anywhere the morflate you have to be able to attach it to your car battery there's that trade-off there as far as batteries are concerned what it's going to come down to is how fast are you going to be able to air up to continue on your adventure if you're on a trail some of them you have to leave the dirt but you're only on pavement for a few miles and then you're back on dirt and then maybe you're only back on dirt for a few miles and you're back on pavement 
pavement or something happens and you got to turn around and come back on the pavement each time you have to get back on pavement you're having to re-air up your tires and that is time if you're trying to hit a specific location if it's starting to get dark any number of things time is of the essence so i think basically what it comes down to is you're going to be paying for quality milwaukee is a great company i can tell you the quality of the morphle is very solid you are going to mostly be paying for time so that is one of the things i want to test in addition to the accuracy of the auto setting i know from experience with the milwaukee that setting it to a certain psi and then checking it on the dash it's not quite there and i actually have to set the milwaukee a couple psi higher to actually get to where i want to be at i made my own four tire hose kit but this will be a good test for me with my current setup and just changing the compressor what kind of difference i'm going to see between the morphle and the milwaukee and i also want to test the accuracy based on the dash so i'm going to air my tires down to 18 psi using my auto inflator auto inflators auto deflators i'm going to use my auto deflators to air all four tires down i have these little brass manual set tire deflators so we're going to get these on get the tires down to 18. we will double check on the dash that they're down to 18. <laughs> While we're waiting for those to deflate, I'm going to go ahead and string out the hose kit as well so we can get ready to refill these and time how long each one takes to reinflate. All right, I got the hose kit all strung out. The thing I wanted to point out really quick, the tires are still deflating. The difference between the Morflate and the Milwaukee, with the pre-installed hose on the Milwaukee, I had to put an adapter on my homemade hose kit to accommodate the Schrader connection on the Milwaukee, whereas the Morflate comes with a quick connect. So that is my hose kit, comes with a digital gauge, comes with a shutoff valve, and then this is the adapter I'm talking about. I basically had to make it with a Schrader connection for the Milwaukee, whereas the Morflate, I'll be able to pull that off and fill directly onto the air quick connect. All right, the tires seem like they're almost done, so I will be back. We'll check the PSIs on those tires. Okay, we are close enough. Let's take a look on the dash. As you can see there, fronts are at 18, rears are at 17. That was a little off. So first up, we are going to do the Milwaukee, my normal way of inflating. So I have a fully charged battery. Let's get her hooked up. So right here, I got to screw this on here. Then we got to connect the hose kit to all four tires. And yes, I know these are cheap pieces off Amazon. It's what I could afford. That's why they say they're cheap. They're hard to get on there without them leaking. There we go. As you can see, this one's leaking from being connected to the other tires. Well, this is a good point to make in the video. You get what you pay for. This is what I get for a homemade kit rather than spending the money on something quality like the Morflate kit. This is going to get loud. So let's turn this on. So this is reading about 17 total as the tires kind of equalize the pressure. Let's see what the Milwaukee says. That sun's glaring on it. So the Milwaukee is reading 17. So we're all pretty close. So I'm going to set this to 38. We're going to get that going. And again, I'm going to test accuracy and time. The Milwaukee will shut off from time to time because it does get pretty hot trying to run for that long filling these back up so we'll set a timer and we'll get it started right as i start the compressor here <laughs> I just stopped the timer. This is one of the things with the Milwaukee. I don't know if it's overheating, but it does this almost every time. You can see there, I have it set for 38. It stopped at 31.5. So I'm gonna restart it to keep going till we get to what Milwaukee thinks is 38. And we'll resume the timer. It stopped again. That is definitely not 38. So we're gonna keep going. We're at 1508. It stopped again, shy of 38. So here we go to get it up to where it stays steady at 38. At 15 minutes, 43 seconds, the Milwaukee is holding at 38. However, our digital gauge is showing 36 and a half. So let's see what the Bronco itself is saying. So there's the Bronco, 37, 35, 35, 36. That tells me my digital gauge is more accurate than the Milwaukee, so we need to keep going. It was at this moment that he knew.
It just stopped again. We are sitting at 1631. However, it's set to 40 and it stops itself at 37. Our digital gauge is showing 37.4. Let's see what the Bronco says. The Bronco is showing 36 on one and 37 on the rest. So once again, we have to try and fine tune this. Let's go back to the drawing board and get this Milwaukee restarted. I'm gonna set it back to 38 since it's showing 37 and maybe it'll give that little extra bump. Let me get the timer ready because this is all time. I should have left the time running because this is all time spent airing up. So I just started the timer again. So here we go. We're gonna drop it down to 39 and hit go. So we're sitting at 1723. Again, this thing shut off at 37.5 when I have it set to 39. Our digital gauge is showing 37.89. Let's see what the Bronco says again. We're still sitting at 37s and a 36. So we're gonna have to bump it up even more. Timer going and we'll restart this again. Another one. Okay, she added in a little more air. This is reading 39. My digital gauge, 38. And the Bronco, once again. This time I'm leaving the timer going because this is all stuff that I would be doing going back and forth to check and make sure that my pressures are good. So we're 37s all the way around, still not at 38. So let's go back, let's bump this up one. Well, see, now the Milwaukee went down to 38. So we'll go to 39 again and go again. It put very little air back in. It is reading 39 still. Bronco, you can see one tire finally says 38. So we need a little more air still to get it to where we want it to be. Could this be a flaw in my homemade hose kit? Sure, it's got kind of small connections. However, you would still think that the air wouldn't take long to even out between all the tires. So this is still reading 39. So if I need to put more air in, I need to bump it up to 40. Now it's back down to 38. Once again, just a tiny bit of air, 38 on one and 37 on the rest. So we need more air. Milwaukee's still reading 39, so we'll bump it up a little bit. I'm gonna stop it by hand. Now we're at 38 on two tires, 37 on the other two. Let's give it a little more air. Okay, it shut itself off right before I hit the button. So let's see where we're at now. Okay, well, now we went ahead and went past 38, but I'd say we're close. So let's stop the timer. So we are looking at 21 minutes, 10 seconds. It was probably legitimately a little bit longer than that because I was actually stopping the timer. Every time I stopped to adjust the air, I stopped, which I shouldn't have. I should have let it go because that's what I would be doing if I was trying to air up. One thing I wanted to point out really quick, I mentioned before I get about two full inflations off one battery. At the completion of the test, we used up half a battery. So we will get these tires re-deflated and then we will check out how much quicker the Mortflate can do this job. So what I didn't do on camera was re-deflate the tires. So I got those down, but I will show you. They are pretty close to what we got before within a PSI or two. So now it's time for the more fleet. The Portland weather today is can't make up its mind. So I'm gonna try and keep it out of the sun because the Milwaukee was out of the sun the whole time. So I'm using this battery here that we pulled out of our camper when we replaced it with a lithium one, but this battery is fully charged. And we have power to the Morflate. Now, this one doesn't tell you the PSI that is in the tire, it looks like. Maybe it will once I start it. I don't know, this is my first time using it. Oops. And let me move this stuff over here so we keep her out of the sun as best we can. I tried to look up the diameter of Morflate's hose kit. I just checked mine. They are quarter inch ID tubing, but I cannot see on Morflate's website what their tubing size is. If I can get an answer from them, maybe I'll reach out to them and find out. I will put that information on the screen. In the meantime, let's get going with the Morflate and see how much time we are going to save. So we are set to 38 and we are gonna go. Well, <laughs> we're not going to go because I don't have the hose plugged in. <laughs> Stand by. This guy is f***ing stupid. Okay. Hose connected. Now we're going to go. Let her. Oh, there we go. It does show the current PSI. So let's double check. We are set for 38.
decibel meter on my phone is not very scientific. It looks like it was showing me the same sound reading right next to the machine as the Milwaukee, but I can tell you right now, real world is way quieter than that Milwaukee. So we'll see as far as timing goes, how long this takes. And after a few stops, it has settled at 38. We are at five minutes, 57 seconds. Let's see what the Bronco says and see how accurate it is. I mean, I fault that partially due to my hose. I'm sure if I let it sit for a little bit, they would equalize, but it's done and it's accurate. I feel comfortable saying I would not have to readjust that. Five minutes. 57 seconds. I'd say that's a pretty good test. This, she's still holding at 38. Didn't have to restart it. Let me get this stuff put away and I'll give you my concluding thoughts. Welcome to my porch swing. So here are some of my final thoughts. Really quick, I just want to touch on the fact the Morflate was quite a bit hotter, especially the braided hose along with some of the parts on my hose kit. So I would highly recommend a pair of gloves or something. But by the time I had the hose kit rolled up, the unit itself was cool enough to put back in its bag. So again, this test wasn't to test whether it was better. I knew it was going to be better, but I wanted to know how much better. And I think a sub six minute time is pretty awesome. Again, that is going to be limited by my homemade hose kit. I've seen other people do tests on this and have sub five minute reinflation times on the same size tires. So I know it can get even better than that. Is the $145 difference worth it? Well, you're looking at less than double the cost and almost three times more than three times faster inflation time. So I'd say the ROI on that is pretty darn good. That is going to save me per reinflation. We're looking at 16 minutes per time. Now multiply that by how many times do you air up and down on average on an Overland Trail? But let's just say three. That's 45 minutes. That's a huge difference. So in my humble opinion, for me, the Morflate was definitely worth putting out the money and having something that I know I can count on and that is obscenely faster. Again, this is not sponsored. I paid my own money for the Morflate. They are not compensating me in any way for this comparison and review. But if you want a quality product, go check them out. I think it's worth the money and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.